So it, the stove comes in, in four different sizes. Primarily we sell the, the, the larger of the three, um, the larger three of the four. The largest is the Yukon package. And then the, just down below that's the Outfitter, which is this one. And then we have the Hunter. The Hunter is sufficient to heat your 16-footer. I've heated a 24-footer with some effort with, with the Hunter. Um, this is, the Outfitter is probably the one that we sell the most of the, for the 24-foot shelter. You won't get as quite as much fuel in it for longer burn at night as you will as a Yukon, and you don't have quite the size of space, uh, cooking space on the top. Your water jacket that comes with it, the Outfitter and the Yukon, are exactly the same size the water jacket is. The Hunter that's a little bit smaller is actually a little bit smaller this direction so you don't get quite the volume in your water jacket as you do with the Outfitter and the Yukon. So this is the nesting stovepipe that comes with the cylinder stoves, all of the cylinder stove packages and they're they're numbered one, two, three, four, five. And this is how you actually end up putting it in on the geo shelter. We have a lot of questions about this. Once you've actually assembled it, you can actually just set it just like that. And then we walk inside and lift it up and set it into the stove. Okay, so we're now inside the shelter. This is what the pipe looks like from inside when we set it in. You're actually just gonna, gonna lift it up from inside once your stove's all set up. It's a little bit wobbly and then you bring it down and set it in your oven. And there you go, you're all finished. When you buy a geo shelter, you actually need to consider the heating options for it. Um, the shelter's made to be able to handle the snow loads and the wind loads. So. How much the snow load would it hold? You know, we had a guy um, that sent pictures, not this last winter, but the winter before, where he set one up and had eight to 10 feet of snowpack. 10 feet on top? Snowpack through the winter and nobody there to check on it all winter long. Huh. They didn't snow machine in and it was, and then he sent me pictures in the spring when it melted enough. And the snow, the pictures, the snow was up to about this this far. On the one side and on the other side it was up probably up to about here still. So in colder climates where you're going to have snow and you're going to need heat, we actually offer the cylinder stoves. Um, there's a lot of different options but you do need to be aware that you can put a stove inside your shelter. The main options and choices you have are the size of your stove jack, most of the shelters and most, excuse me, most of the um, stoves come with a five inch um, stack chimney. You can get it with a four and a half inch, a five inch, or a six inch. And that's actually the size and diameter of this oval. This is a high temperature silicone, um, glass reinforced um, stove jack insert so it handles the heat as it goes through your shelter wall on the ceiling so that you don't start anything on fire. One of the other reasons we've chosen them is that it all comes self-contained. When you purchase a, a package, one of the stove packages, the Yukon, the Outfitter, the Hunter package, you get your nesting stove pipe, your legs, your water jacket, and your warming tray so that when you're done cooking you can take your hot pan off of cooking and set it here. It all comes self-contained inside the actual belly of the stove. Your legs come off and it all packs up into that little package and it's light enough weight to actually be portable enough to take and strong enough to hold up long term. Another option that you have with, with all of them is an oven. And the reason that we love their ovens is because they have made them so that you can actually, the smoke comes out it, and it hits the bottom of the oven. You don't get any smoke in your chamber you have about an inch and a half gap that runs the perimeter. Smoke wraps around and runs out the top. 
They've done it so that it's the heating is as uniform inside here as possible so that you don't end up getting on a lot of the square units that stove, that stove pipe is in the back corner and you end up getting a hot spot so your food burns in that back corner. Um, this actually heats uniformly. The other, op the other thing that was wonderful is you'll always get creosote buildup inside that chamber over time. And if you don't have a way to clean it out, it will build up and become a fire hazard. And they've created a system that on the back of it, there's a, you can hear it, it's kind of loud. It's got a, a metal rod that spins on both sides that'll break that creosote free. So on a daily basis, when you're using it daily, you spin that once or twice, it cleans it out, and that creosote drops into your, the chamber of your stove, and you can clean it out from there. So here's the rod that runs on the back. It actually has a rod that, that runs the length of your, on the inside of the chamber. And when you spin it, you hear it rubbing, it breaks the creosote free on the chamber that your smoke runs in. He's actually put reinforcing bars that run this way and this way along the top so that your, your cooking surface over time when you heat it up won't warp or cup or dish um, over time. And the belly of the stove won't either just because of the, the circular portion of it. Do you recommend people put some kind of spark cover down below? Yep. We actually sell a, it's called Thermo Felt blanket that goes underneath it. Um, a lot of people will buy a welding blanket, but they buy a fiberglass based welding blanket. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to buy a fiberglass welding blanket. You'll get those fiberglass slivers mm -hmm. and those everywhere inside your shelter. So. Whatever they use, they just need to make sure that it's not a fiberglass-based okay. blanket. So we sell those blankets that go underneath. They're three and a half by five feet, so they come out beyond, so that if any sparks fall, it falls on the welding blanket. The felt, they actually took a um, acetylene torch and put a penny on it. He had like a... 12 by 12 square and he held it and he put a penny on it and melted that penny to a blob while it was on his hand. No heat transfer enough to, to warm him up and then he poured it off of his hand. So that's why you actually need something underneath it because if you use something like this, the actual conduction of the heat will go, it won't burn this, but it'll go right through that and it will melt if they're flush with each other. It'll melt your floor. So the reason we've chosen the cylinder stoves to sell with our shelters, there's many stoves that'll work in the geo shelters. Um, but the main reasons is because they're made in the United States. Um, they're made here in Utah. We have a relationship with the, with the company that builds them and he's been building them for 20 years. And he's actually gone through a lot of iterations and understands the different gauge of steel that you need and the type of steel that you need. So the top plate, your outside gauge of steel that runs the, the perimeter of your stove, the belly of the stove, your door. Um, they're all a little bit different gauge of steel for the amount of heat that it takes. He said in, in, in over 20 years, he's seen two of this, these stoves burnt out on the bottom from constant use. They wear and tear wonderfully. Um, the other main reason we chose them is because they're portable. He, he chooses those gauges to keep this as light as possible, but still strong enough to hold up to daily use. 